Hi, good day, and thank you for joining our webinar on how to streamline your PCI pen testing process. Um, I'm your host, Corey Bronkow. I'm the Director of Engineering, and I've got a few uh, housekeeping items to go through to help this webinar run smoothly, and then we'll get started. Uh, feel free to use the question and answer feature at the bottom of your Zoom window at any time during the presentation. Uh, during the presentation, and depending on the question, we may answer that question verbally uh, with our host of panels panelists here, uh, or but via text in the uh, Q&A panel, uh, or at the end of the session. And even after the webinar, if we run out of time, we will shoot you back an email based on your registration uh, information. Uh, another frequent question that we get is, will we send you the slides and the recording after the webinar? The answer to that question is yes. Both of those will be included in an email after the event. And then if you think of a question that you uh, didn't get to ask during the webinar, please reach out to us at info at horizon3.ai at any time. And uh, with that, we'll get started. So here's our agenda. Uh, I'll introduce the panelists here uh, briefly. Uh, we'll have a one slider on human machine teaming and why we think that's a valuable way to streamline your pen testing for PCI uh, compliance. Uh, we've got James Flowers here who will talk about his perspective as an auditor on pen testing uh, for PCI compliance. And then I've got Wyatt uh, Wilson here to answer any questions from the pen tester's perspective. And I've got Brian Marr, uh, who's our security operations um, manager, and he's going to talk through a practitioner's view of he's got his pen test, now what? And then we'll finalize with some question and answers uh, from the team or from the attendees. I'm sorry. Moving forward, here's who's on the panel. Uh, I'm your host, Corey Bronkow. I'm the Director of Engineering. I've been at Horizon3.ai for about two years now. Um, I retired out of Special Operations Command uh, about two years ago, and it's been my privilege to work in the Horizon3.ai company since then. Uh, Wyatt Wilson, he's a senior security expert, offensive security expert on our attack team. Uh, he's a certified pen tester. He's an expert in penetration testing techniques. Um, also have a, as a host of qualifications to include uh, the OSCP, uh, as well as lots of other certifications that make him an expert in pen testing. Uh, next, we have uh, James Flowers. He's an auditor from the M-Theory Group. Um, he's a certified information security specialist auditor. Uh, he's been a virtual CISO at, at multiple clients. Uh, he's got a patent pending for audit methodology, and he's a wealth of knowledge in all types of audits, uh, especially with regard to PCI pen testing. And then finally, we've got Brian Marr. Uh, he actually works with me at uh, Horizon 3. He's our security operations manager. He's got exceptional experience on the receiving end of audits. And so I think his uh, perspective on how to use Node Zero to be effective in the PCI compliance um, um, journey uh, is, is interesting and exciting, uh, especially uh, for, for me to hear about. All right, so we'll move into human machine pin or human machine teaming. What is it and why is it valuable? So we see human machine pen testing as the ability to use an automated product to make the humans that are required in the process much more effective. And so the diagram there shows our OSCP pen tester. In that case, it's probably Wyatt Wilson for us using node zero to combine and become the pen test, uh, the pen testing team uh, to gain PCI compliance. And so when you group those two people together, you get a force multiplier for the pen tester. Why it is able to use Node Zero to conduct a lots of pen testing activities in an autonomous fashion, so that he, as the human in the loop, can strictly focus like a scalpel on the things that are more valuable or more important that Node Zero uh, may not be able to exploit currently. So you've got the human element, you've got the machine autonomous speed and scope and scale element, and what that what that provides to the user of Node Zero is a faster, better, more repeatable product, uh, complete with remediation information, as well as verification support for the client that we'll get into once Brian gets into the demo. And so right now we're, we're um, uh, publishing this as a PCI compliant uh, capability. Um, folks can purchase this direct through Node Zero and MSSP and other partners can, can sell this product to their clients and then I think the cool part of what Node Zero provides is the fix action reports become a really simple uh, framework to build a statement of work 
for remediation services, which Horizon 3.ai does not provide at this time uh, or probably won't provide because of capacity uh, restrictions. Um, so that's kind of what I think about human machine teaming and the value there. And uh, so I'm going to kick over to James to talk about the auditor's perspective of our concept on uh, PCI pen testing. Take it away, James. Okay. Uh, just, I mean, this is applicable to really any standard, whether it's NIST 800, 53R5, CMMC, CIS. But for the, this uh, conversation, I'm going to talk about the PCI, you know, uh, PCI DSS. Uh, as you know, the current standard is four. It's in effect as of March 31st. Uh, PCI DSS compliance is required by pretty much anyone that it handles cardholder data or touches cardholder data. And one of the most stringent requirements in there are uh, manual pen testing and uh, validation of uh, vulnerability results. If you could go to the next slide, Corey. There are two methods of fulfilling the PCI requirements. You can hire a QSA auditor to come in there and perform a rock. Uh, as you know, that will also include a pen test as a label by 11.4, but I think the more common for most vendors is to complete a uh, SAQ self-assessment questionnaire. As you can see from this table, uh, the vast majority of the majority of them do require a penetration test, even if the penetration test is not explicitly called for, it will say if segmentation is used. Uh, from an auditing perspective, just uh, my, my personal feel on this, if you have a network segmentation that's uh, separating your cardholder data, you have to have it. If you don't have network segmentation that's separating your cardholder data, you should really give a deep, deep thought to having it because securing it without segmentation is going to be almost impossible. If you could, next slide, sir. Yeah, James, I think that's an important point because Node Zero actually provides a segmentation report as a part of its normal pen testing capability. So thanks absolutely, for absolutely, that is one of the great strengths of the uh, platform is that the segmentation report is built in. It's not an afterthought, so it's going to be performed uh, every time the, the the tool is used, and you have to have it. Um, when you're talking about the selection of penetration testers, you know. In, in the real world, not not everything is equal. Not, not all penetration testers are equal in experience and certifications. Um, Horizon three has the highest standards for experience and certifications, as you just saw from a uh, from Wyatt's uh, brief resume. There's a wide range of human talent that goes into these tools. It's not just one person that has input into a Horizon 3 node zero. It's multiple people, so you're having the best practices. A lot of times when you're dealing with an isolated individual, it is entirely dependent upon that one individual skill set. This is many individual skill set topped off with, you know, someone like uh, Wyatt who has those uh, impressive skills, of OSCP and CISSP and offensive technology. It's fast too, guys. Uh, a lot of the penetration tests that I've been involved in have taken a long time and produced Results like there's something broke, dude, you have to fix it. This is far in excess of that. Firstly, it's quicker, a lot quicker. Uh, the second thing is you don't get the dude, something's broke. You get a detailed explanation of what's broke, how to fix it, et cetera, that uh, Brian will talk about here in a moment. What is the quality of the report? I would say as an auditor, I would accept their penetration testing report as an evidentiary artifact, no questions asked. Uh, they do not throw it over the wall. They will stay engaged. And you don't even have to figure out how to interpret it because it's very explicit in the report. You can hand that over to your remediation folks uh, for entering, or even, even as a compliance exercise for entering into your risk register. It's going to save you a ton of time, not only in the amount of time it takes to do the test, but in the amount of time it takes to enter the information and in the remediation efforts. You could go next slide, sir. And I really could go on about this all day long, guys, but I've got limited time because it's a webinar. So excuse my brevity. I'm going to share my screen real quick. As, as any auditor would, and, and I do pride myself on that, I did an analysis of the PCI DSS uh, penetration testing requirements as opposed to the uh, capabilities of the Node Zero tool. Uh, as you can see, each one of these, these are your main requirements, 11.4 and its sub-requirements. For example, this has 22 subs. I'm not going to go through every one of these. I'm just simply going to highlight that in every way, 
the tool is compatible. It will produce evidentiary artifacts that will meet your audit requirements. I would note that, uh, like like uh, Corey indicated earlier, you know, uh, Node Zero Horizon Three does not do the remediations. That was the only thing you have to do your remediation. One of the things that that I'd like to call out now in the few minutes that I have left is um, when you do the remediations, you know, you have to produce an evidentiary artifact generally as your management response to an auditor to satisfy the requirements to close that out. Uh, you do not have to use an entire new penetration test to do this. They have what's called one-click verify. If I receive a finding on X, I can test only X. It's quick, it's fast, and it will produce an evidentiary artifact that you can then use in your management response to close those remediations if you have them. It is extraordinarily efficient. Um, as an auditor, the reason that I did this is because I wanted to know what I was going into when I looked at this. Is this really going to be, be, be up to standard? Is it really going to be able to pass? Can I really rely on this for my uh, SAQs? The answer is unequivocally, yes, you can. This is, a, I hate to say it, but it's disruptive technology. I mean, it's just so efficient that you will save so much time. And if you get with certain auditors, it will reduce the cost of those audits itself. That's the nature of it. The less time the auditors spend in the field, the less hours they believe. So you receive efficiency, completeness, audit evidence, and uh, probably a reduction in your cost overall for an audit. That's uh, that's what I have to say. This is a delightful tool. Thank you, gentlemen, for allowing me to have the time to uh, to present this today and get my opinion of it. Just a, a huge fan. Thank you. Hey, thanks, James. You you mentioned the word evid evidentiary artifact. Can you describe for the for the audience, you know, a little bit more about that and why it's important to have those or to be able to produce those as an auditor or as an audited organization? Well, evidentiary artifact. That's an audit speak for prove it. Uh, if I say I had a penetration test, I'm going to, as an auditor, I'm going to say, eh, I got to see that report, prove it. You know, and that, that is the report that the tool generates, and it's fit for purpose right there. To send the report, you just proved you did it. You know, you proved it was thorough. You proved it looked at segmentation. You proved it looked at all of these types of things. It's complete, it's thorough, and uh, any auditor is going to be delighted with it because it's going to save them a lot of time. The uh, other aspect of evidentiary artifacts is when you say I fixed it, Again, an auditor is going to say, prove it. So you're going to have to show your one-click verify or run an entirely new pen test, which is not necessary. You run-click verify, here's your artifact. I fixed it. So you can close out those remediations and those risks. It gets into risk audit compliance and governance, even the entering these risks into your risk register. The tool categorizes them not only by CSV, but also by a business need. So you can take those almost directly out of the tool, drop them into your risk register and manage them in that manner. Now, there's so many functions and features that will ease the audit burden on your organization, both being audited and in the remediation and in the tracking and mitigation of risk. It, it really is phenomenal. Thanks, James. I appreciate it. All right, we're going to move over to Brian, and uh, he's going to show you from a practitioner point of view. He's uh, he's our sec ops, but also in charge of IT here at uh, Horizon3.ai. He's been subject to multiple audits on multiple occasions, so uh, looking forward to hearing your experience and uh, seeing what you can do with Node Zero. Awesome. Thanks, Corey, for the introduction. Let me, uh, let me preface it for everyone that I am not a pen tester. Never have been. Not in, not in my setup. I've always been on the blue team side of things. I've genuinely enjoyed the defensive and uh, practice for, for guarding the castle, if you will, throughout my career aspect. So I am by no means a pen tester. I don't have those qualifications at all. I have always been the, on the receiving end of, hey, we got our pen test. Here's our findings. Here's the different items that we have to go through and do. Here is everything that we're looking to to achieve and remediate from uh, a security standpoint. Uh, and sometimes that involves getting people that aren't necessarily subject matter experts in a particular area. I have to get different stakeholders involved to do the remediation. Usually I'm kind of the one just herding the cats for some things. Sometimes there are remediations that I have to go through and do the implementation for. Um as James said, you know, it's it's I've had different quality pen test reports that I've gotten, some that are extremely detailed, give me a really good uh, plan of attack that I can take that back to the business and go through. OK, here's from you know criticality to least criticality of how to go through and do those remediations, mitigations, acceptance, you know, exercises um, as part of the risk process. Uh, and then I've gotten really bad ones. Um, 
that don't really give me any details. It requires numerous coordination and meetings to get things figured out. Okay, what do you really mean by this? Uh, to get the details needed to do to do those remediation exercises. Um, and then the flip side too is you know everybody's human. This human human error happens across the board, right? This helps to alleviate the error of humans, right? You know, how good is your pen tester? Do you have somebody straight out of college that's doing this? Do you have a 20 year vet that's doing this? Even if you got the 20 year vet, how do you know they got every possible attack path and scenario going through? And so that's where this as a tooling perspective from the defensive side of things is beautiful because it lets you see all the uh, impacts and how they uh, one vulnerability can be exploited to uh, further uh, compromise the domain here so from my screen this is the pen test within node zero, node zero that was ran um this is a, a demo environment that we have this particular pen test uh i have a bunch of findings ton of information on it right if i drill into just a couple of them just so you guys can see everything right we'll simulate that i have clicked on this finding this was a new uh azure ad entra uh vulnerability that came through so I go into that for credential dumping. This gives me from a defensive practitioner to also inform, inform subject matter experts of whoever could be the person that is over this, everything that I need. Here is the proof of how this vulnerability was exploited, as well as the fix actions, if the demo gods will go, there we go, as well as the fix actions on how to go through and do the mitigation efforts for it, the downstream impacts that this would also this particular exploitable vulnerability then allows these other items to go through and do so you know hey i need to fix this one because it's enabling all these items down further but it also gives you the beauty of it from a security perspective like how did this really happen like what was the pathway that this caused to happen and so you can see from our node zero host in the network after 11 minutes, it was able to exploit this weakness. And if you go into each and every single one of these in the attack path graph itself, below that, you will see all the proof showing for each of these items happening. So it was able to do that. We were then able to load a remote access tool. And you can see how the bottom changed to show more details of it. So as we go along the attack path, right, I can see how the total time within the environment was able to go through and the different exploit techniques that were done in the environment to make this uh, particular attack pack happen. And then I could go through and take action on this one and particularly do a one click verify for this one. You know, so we can go through and say like, hey, we think we did the vulnerability, you know, remediation from it or our team did that. We ran a one click verify on it. Hey, guess what? The, the latest results came back saying it's still, you know, exploitable because the current host is unreachable. Um, for a result, we'll drill in on a JBoss vulnerability specifically. So we have a JBoss application. We'll simulate that I clicked on this, right? We were able to compromise this host. And again, just so you can see the different types of attack paths, right? We were able to compromise this host right here. It was a one-step attack path. Again, depending on the exploitation techniques, like the attack path graphs can be extremely uh, visual and there could be many steps to actually go through that. But again, we have everything for the proof showing that's happening here. We have a downstream impact here. Let's say I worked with the subject matter experts. I had my internal meetings, you know, that were needed to go through and get the team. Hey, we need to go through and do the remediation of this, right? I got the report back from the team saying, hey, we've done this. We've remediated this. Cool. I can add this to what's called a one-click verify cart. So instead of having to run a whole new penetration test, I can just come into the existing pen test operation that we ran, run the cart, see it. Okay. Hey, everything that I want to go through and remediate and validate that was done. Uh, we can do that by adding it to this cart and then run the one click verify node zero will then go through and do the access for it. And then at that point you'll get the remediation. So once that one click verify goes, we'll simulate that. I got the confirmation that the one click verify was done. Then I go through and see, Oh, Hey, I can actually see, it was mitigated on this particular one, but this host is unreachable. So maybe there was, hey, that host was offline at that point, or we decommissioned that host because it was no longer needed, but things like that. At this point, this gives you the evidentiary artifact as well to show that you are doing the remediation exercises within your environment based on the pen test that you get. And this is where the power for me from a security practitioner goes through is I can use 
the knowledge that pen penetration testing has from an offensive standpoint to inform me as a blue teamer to a defensive standpoint to go through and identify, Hey, here's where the big rocks that we need to go fix, not just relying on specific CVE, you know, and patch management exercises. This is specifically looking at the exploitability of those things. So with that, I'll toss it back over to Corey. Hey, thanks, Brian. Just a couple of questions came up. Uh, so one in, in my mind is so Compliance for PCI auditing is probably considered a once a year type of thing. Hey, we're due for our audit. Let's do a pen test, run the pen test, get the results, fix the problems, you know, show, show the results to your auditor, convince them that you fix the things that are bad and then get your stamp of approval. How does node zero kind of change your philosophy on, on the finding and fixing of vulnerabilities throughout the year? No, that's, that's a great question. For me, from my standpoint, right, compliance, if you look at compliance, obviously everybody has some type of regulatory item that they have to go through and do, but compliance is the bare minimum of things. That's literally what it is. I'm doing this at a minimum to meet the compliance standpoint from a find fix and like actually practicing security for safeguarding and getting to that next iteration of security practices as a company, running those frequent penetration tests, right? I mean, that is very powerful knowledge because obviously everybody knows there's new vulnerabilities exploitable like the cc is being updated almost frequently numerous times a day right there's numerous numerous vulnerabilities that are happening time in and time again so we're being able to run these pen tests not from an not from a vulnerability scanning standpoint but from a hey can i actually exploit this in my environment standpoint and know the impact that this would actually have does it have downstream impacts if this is, gets exploited on this host like being able to see that and use that to harden and mitigate and remediate within my environment is super powerful it takes what was traditional vulnerability scanning and hey i have 5000 criticals on this one particular host right not all those are exploitable. So patch management and those types of things should take over for those items. But here's where we really need to focus on something because it is exploitable. This gives that blue teamer side of things. Again, I said earlier, use an offense to inform defense. It gives you that frequent sparring partner so you can actually have a purple team even without having the subject matter expert of a pen tester in your org. This is a tool that you can use to to validate and build those defensive practices out and enrich your, your programs uh, greatly. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. I'll reach over to the panel. Wyatt, I don't know if there's any questions uh, for you in the chat room or if there's uh, others that we should address. No, I don't see any uh, other open lingering questions. All right. Thanks. I'll pull, uh, let me pull a couple others here. So, uh, um stand by um james this one's for you um what are the top differences between the current pci regulation and the old standard because you remarked earlier that we're on the new standard version 4.0 uh i wondered if that changed any of the pen test requirements or any of the key things that you're you're finding in the field for from the audit perspective muted james Well, that helps. Uh, no, sir, it didn't change the penetration testing requirements. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, let me see if I've got one for uh, Wyatt here. Um, well, so for Wyatt, since you're a pen tester uh, in the, of the human variety that uses Node Zero and helps to build it, what do you think the future of automated pen testing solutions versus the manual methods uh, for pen testing and compliance might be? Uh, yeah, so I think um, the future of automated pen testing solutions versus manual, uh, it's going to be hybrid for a while until the technology can can catch up to, to the human mind. Um, AI is at the forefront of everybody's mind right now. Um, so everyone's like uh, all excited about it. And we're using that technology in our product to help inform decisions on the product and, and doing things. Um, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so that's why some of these regulatory com um, uh, councils like PCI DSS, they require that manual pen tester because they're not educated enough yet to understand that these tools are becoming um, 
prevalent or not really prevalent. Um, we're kind of the best and first of what we're doing, but um, it's uh, once they're educated on the capabilities of Node Zero and the accuracy and everything, uh, they're definitely going to um, want to change their wording because, uh, of course, right now they're using a lot of the wording like vulnerability scanning, and everybody knows that's that's noisy, it's messy, um, people don't know where to focus, um, and where the automated pen testing solutions Excel is that we exploit these vulnerabilities that can actually affect your network, and we show you proof on how it's done. Um, so for a little while, it's going to be a hybrid still, um, but that that gap will will shrink eventually. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks, Wyatt. I got to share my screen here one more time and show some references. So as we wrap up this webinar, like uh, really exciting stuff across, uh, you know, three different perspectives from a auditor's point of view on the regulations and how to prove to an auditor that you're compliant with the pen testing requirements as set forth in PCI uh, DSS regulations to a practitioner point of view, you know, Brian's plight as the blue teamer on our team to protect the castle and to use uh, use tooling as appropriate to maintain, not just gain compliance, but maintain compliance and, and really more importantly, gain and maintain security of our network and our crown jewels on a continuous basis because that's the attacker, you know, attackers have continuous access to try to penetrate uh, our walls. And then uh, why it's, you know, pen testing experience as a as an expert pen tester and his uh, contributions to the product and the contributions to the the uh, pen testing community and the compliance community in helping inform, um, you know, regulations, requirements and, and, and auditing frameworks that uh, automated pen testing is a useful alternative to uh, a, a lesser product, which is really the manual pen testing by itself. Um, so some resources we use to put this webinar together. Uh, we've got uh, pen testing services for compliance. We've got a web uh, web page if you want to get more information. There's a fact sheet out there, uh, Node Zero fact sheet by itself. Uh, we also reference the PCI Security Standards Council documentation. And like I said at the beginning, if you've got questions that weren't answered during the webinar or just want to reach out, uh, please hit us up at info at horizon3.ai. And I thank you for your time and uh, and attention here during this webinar. Have a great day.